Hey, welcome. So I have a brand new video for you today. So today I'll be doing a dedicated gear review of my favorite camera, my Sony a7C. There are a lot of rumors at the moment of a new Sony a7C Mark II, and I thought why not do a review of it here in 2023. So if you're looking into buying this camera in 2023, maybe this review can help you in your decision. This review will be my thoughts and experience using this camera for the past two and a half years and from a street photographer's perspective. All right, let's dig into it. Let's take a quick overview of this camera. So Sony has been pumping out a lot of cameras for every budget level in the recent years. And when this camera came out in 2020, it wasn't a particular hit with the reviewers. It was basically considered a repackaged Sony a7 III with better autofocus. And uh, for me, I decided to buy this camera because of two driving factors. It was a full frame sensor and also it was very compact. So let's take a look at some of the main features. So it is a rangefinder style camera. It has a chrome or silver top and I have the chrome silver top version. It has a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, which is full frame. It has the capabilities of recording in 4K24 and it has S-Log2, which is 8-bit. And it has a battery life that is also on par with some of the better cameras. So it can take 740 pictures on one charge, which is really great when you're doing street photography. So why did I buy the Sony a7C? So some of the driving factors that I also mentioned before was the compactness of the camera and also the full frame capabilities. And especially the larger sensor that allows me to have more details and higher resolution in my photos. And it has a wider field of view. It has a narrow depth of field that you get with larger sensors compared to crop sensors. And also for me, it was really important that it uh, could perform good in low light situations. And uh, for me, I was really getting into night street photography, which is actually one of my favorite things to do in street photography. Another driving factor for me was the interchangeable lenses option. So basically the whole ecosystem around lenses. So basically you can buy different lenses from Sony themselves and they are really upgrading and putting out a lot of different lenses with different focal lengths. But also you have the options of buying a Sony mounted lenses from other third party vendors like Sigmas or the Tamrons of the world. So basically you have a lot of option when you buy into an ecosystem. And for me, that was the key when I actually started to think about investing in a camera brand. So how do I use my Sony a7C? So when I bought it back in 2021, my sole focus for this camera was to use it for photography and use it for street photography. And uh, I used it to practice a lot of different uh, aspects of photography in general. And uh, in the recent year, I started using this camera more and more for video work uh, for this channel. And it's a great hybrid camera because it has both the photography aspect of it, but also video capabilities. They might not be the best uh, that we have right now, but it's okay for my need right now. And uh, that also leads me into some of the pros and cons with this camera. So let's start with the pros. And obviously I mentioned a few of them before. So it's the whole lightweight compactness of the camera. It is quite lightweight. It is only 500 grams. And if you pair it with a small lens and the footprint of the camera is quite small. And Sony has a dedicated G lenses, not the GM, but the G lenses. And some of them are very small and they are made for the Sony a7C or the smaller cameras. So the overall footprint of that is quite tiny. And another thing was that I also mentioned before, the ability to uh, change your lenses as you like and also not be only locked into the Sony brand. You have a lot of different third party manufacturers that you can choose from. So a lot of versatility in terms of customizing your camera as you, as you like. Some of the cons with this camera is obviously the ergonomics of the camera. So for me, the grip is not that great and it was a conscious decision for me to buy a hand strap from Peak Design and I also later on bought the hand cuff for it and just to be able to uh, have it securely in my hands because I was a little bit afraid in the beginning of dropping it. But it hasn't been a big problem since then. I think I've gotten so used to it, so it's not a deal breaker for me. Another big thing with this camera is that the EVF is really not that good, and that is true. Um, and also I was coming from the Canon 800D where I actually used the EVF. And uh, basically in this camera, I've gotten used to not using it at all because first of all, the eye cup is virtually not there. And I did buy an external eye cup for it and uh, I never use it anyway. So I've gotten so used to using the LCD and it works perfectly fine for me. I don't think about it anymore. And I have another problem now because I've recently bought the Fuji X100V and I have to get used to using the EVF. 
because the EVF is much better in the, in the Fuji camera. So for me, it's just about getting used to something and then getting used to something else. So yes, it is a deal breaker because it's not that good, but for me, you can get used to anything. Another con was that it doesn't have a lot of buttons on the camera altogether. But again, for me, I was coming from a cheaper camera and I was not really used to anything. I wasn't really locked into having a lot of buttons. So I quite quickly got used to not having a shutter dial. Um, so right now I can use my camera really fast because I have that muscle memory already. So again, it might be a deal breaker for somebody that is used to having a shutter button or have dedicated uh, CE1 buttons uh, and customizing it uh, that way. For me, I customized it uh, with the options that I have with this camera and it works perfectly fine for me. So again, my point is that you can get used to anything uh, if you put your mind to it. And uh, again, it's just all about uh, making the best of uh, what you have. So another uh, con was, or maybe a pro or a con, depends on how you see it, is that the price tag was around $2,000 back in 2020 and 2021. And for me, I think it was reasonable to enter that full frame sensor market. And uh, But it is quite a steep price tag for a camera, if you're looking into buying it, I think you can buy it for around $1,500, $1,600 right now. Final thoughts on the Sony a7C and if it's still good in 2023. I believe uh, the Sony a7C meets all my needs in terms of street photography and video work that I do for this YouTube channel. There are so many camera brands out there right now that are producing great cameras with great features, but I'd rather spend money on a camera that gives me a unique experience using that camera. That is why I bought the even older Fuji X100V. So for me, it's all about making photography fun instead of having the latest and greatest features. But that might be different for you. So I hope this review helped you in your decision or just inspired you. All right, take care. See you in the next one.